at the end of this year, holiday 2020, we can play as a Creed Valhalla on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC via the Epic Game Store and Uplay. And I think we can both agree that it looks awesome, right? Well, I got even more hyped after my interview with the creative director Ashraf Ismail. He of course directed both Black Flag and Origins and is now leading this game. And really a ton of the things that I wanted to see improved are being worked on for this game. It all looks very promising. And this game is going to be huge. 14 studios are helping Ubisoft Montreal. And in this video I will share some first ever gameplay screenshots. A ton of details that I learned about the game including about the new combat systems, the hidden blade that is of course back. And an OG Assassin's Creed thing is also back. There's a ton to discuss. A like on the video would be super appreciated. And let's go. Let's start with the main character who is called Eivor. And just like in Odyssey, you can choose to pick a male or female version of this character. But they will both be called Eivor. And Ashraf was really focused on that this is the journey of Eivor. And that you can just choose to play that character as a male or female. And you can actually customize the hair tattoos, war paint and gear of the character as well. And it sounds like a good approach without going full create your own character. But I do think that this means that they will both say the same things like we saw with Alexios and Cassandra. And the choices will be back as well. But I want to touch on that in a second. Because while we have a clear idea of what the male variant of Eivor will look like. Who is the female character? It's still kind of unclear. We do see her already in the art from Boss Logic. And also in one gameplay screenshot we can have a good look at her hanging on this viking longship. Looking pretty awesome, I like her hairstyle but again we can customize that as well. And we also see a raid party on your ship. Because yes, you can have a raiding party with you when you go out in the world. And these characters are actually characters you meet in the world and you can customize them as well. And they should have an impact on the narrative of the game too. I hope we can also romance them, but that is not clear at this point. And I love the fort here in the distance. And we of course see our raven friend, who we can likely use to scout the area. And our ship is by the way customizable, just like in Odyssey. And we will use it to traverse the rivers and the sea. And the Saxons will also make defenses over time to counter our use of the long ship. I don't know if there will be like naval combat. It seems like the ship will just be used for transportation. But again, I'm not entirely sure. So as Eivor, we will leave Norway early in the game due to war and lack of space to grow. And then we go to England because that is the land of opportunity. And Vikings were also great farmers. And the farmland in England is just way better. So the game will mostly take place in England, the 9th century Dark Age of England to be exact. And during this time England still had four different kingdoms and they will all be in the game. And if you know your Viking history or watch some Viking TV shows like me, then they will all sound familiar. East Anglia, North Umbria, Mercia and Wessex. But Ashraf also wanted to stress that it's also an Assassin's Creed world. So the conflict between the Assassins and the Templars is taking place. But of course as the Hidden Ones and the Order of Ancients. As the game and the Viking era in general of course takes place before the first game and the existence of the Templars. And A4 will actually meet the Hidden Ones early in the game. Although he doesn't really know what this means. But during this meeting he will get the hidden blade. Although Ashraf would not really tell why and what the purpose was. But there should be a bigger picture at play here. And as we of course saw in the trailer he uses it like Darius. But on the left wrist instead of the right. But yeah not under the wrist like Bayek before him. And the reason is based on the Viking culture and the Norse culture. And that's really all that Ashraf wanted to say. So if you got some theories as to why he might be wearing it like this, then drop it down in the comments. So yes, we will have this journey of Eivor as an assassin, but also as a Viking. He is a lone wolf, a lot of ambition, wants glory for himself. But is also a leader within the community. And the community depends on Eivor. And this is where the choices come in. You namely have your personal goal but also the wishes of your community. So you have to kind of choose in what direction you want to take the story. And I think we see that in the trailer a little bit as well. Where he chooses to let the woman and the child live. 
while all the other Vikings are like killing everyone. And overall in the trailer we of course see a ton of combat and yes there's stealth as well and actually one of the OG SS Creed features is returning. More on that a little later but let's focus now on the brutal melee combat. Because maybe you noticed the dual wielding at some point in the trailer. And well, this is actually a huge part of this game. You can namely dual wield any combination of weapons, including shields. So yes, yeah, shields are back in this game. And thanks to this new system, you can actually walk around with two of them at the same time. I can't wait to make a shield only build. That should be awesome. And there will be like Viking round shields, but also longer shields as we see in this awesome picture. And something I'm super excited about is the flail, a completely new weapon category for the game. Like who doesn't want to swing around these weapons? And overall, like this dual wield system should change things up a ton compared to Origins and Odyssey. You can basically choose to play like Odyssey without a shield but with dual wields or you can go back to Origins and use one weapon and a shield. There are spears as well, Dane axes, way more type of axes, maces. Overall the gear system should also be reworked. Every gear piece is unique, likely meaning that you can only find one piece of it instead of multiple different versions. And just like in the previous games, you can upgrade it to the end of the game and now also customize every piece of gear. And we already see a pretty cool armor set right here. Not sure how deep the customization will be, but overall you should really be able to focus on one specific gear set if you like that a lot or just focus on getting everything that should also be possible. And the skills and the abilities that we can unlock should also enhance and modify that dual wield system. And also how you can earn these skills and level up should be way more focused on the world and likely different activities that you can do instead of just killing. Although I wasn't able to ask more about it, like I really had to pick and choose my questions because I only had 25 minutes. But hopefully we will learn more about this because it does sound completely different compared to the previous games. But yeah, I did ask more questions about being an assassin. And I can confirm that while we don't have any footage of a cloak and a hood, something that I find pretty strange, there will still be one in this game and you can manually bring it up and down just like in Origins. Great news and overall they want to bring more of the Assassin's Creed unique flavors back and social stealth is one of them. But it will have a unique twist and not much more is known yet. Although I get while in Origins it did not really make sense to have this feature because you were this warrior magi and Blending in with regular civilians did not really make sense, while in this game you could more easily blend in with other Vikings. Really curious to see this in action and overall sneaking is of course still possible and there will be abilities and skills that enhance that playstyle, although we haven't really seen that in action yet. Now Ubisoft decided to focus their marketing material for this reveal on the visual combat. So like especially in the trailer we already see a guy being beheaded. Spears piercing through bodies and we should expect the same level of brutality in the game as well. And Ashraf said that they worked extra hard to make every hit feel crunchy, meaningful and weighty. And another big focus for this game is on the enemy variety. And they're really just hitting all the points on my wish list so far. So what they basically want is that if you have been playing for 20 hours you can still encounter an enemy that you haven't seen before or that has a capacity, so likely a weapon combination that you haven't seen before. And really, in Origins and Odyssey, there were no more surprises left after 10 hours apart from some like very high-end encounters like the mythical creatures and the elephants. And here in this Assassin's Creed Valhalla screenshot, we see a fight in the snow against one of those tougher enemies with, from the looks of it, a two-handed Vlil weapon. And we are wearing a cloak here, I can't wait to play this and this is likely an enemy from another kingdom wearing a yellow sort of orange outfit. But we should also be fighting bandits, different viking clans and other surprise groups likely comparable to like the cultists that we saw in Odyssey for example. And then I did not touch on one of the most important parts of the game from the sounds of it and that is your settlement that is in a set location in England and you will return to this settlement every time. I think we see it here in the trailer, so there should be many buildings that have gameplay value and you can customize and upgrade them. And the before mentioned raiding party will also be in your settlement as well and you can choose to bring them there or not. 
So from the settlement, you can go into the world on a quest. And then at the end, you will return to the settlement again. So it kind of sounds like the home base in Far Cry New Dawn, only more fleshed out. And I want to see more of this system because it can really go both ways, I think. It could be like a time sink, a resource sink, just another part of the game that can keep us busy and that they can also monetize. Or will it actually be a fun place to hang out with cool narrative elements and also meaningful upgrades. Right now it's kind of hard to know. We also know about another big part of the game and those will be the assaults on giant fortifications. And those are like the big battles we see in the trailer as well. And they should be linked to the narrative. And I asked if these battles were also replayable after the game was finished. But Ashraf would not say that yet. And I really hope that they learned from Origins and look more at Odyssey where things were like constantly happening after you finish the main story. And I'm really excited about this if you did not notice it already. Like many things that Ashraf mentioned were things that I wanted to see improved. And I feel that this might be like a fresh wind in many regards while still building upon the RPG elements that they introduced in Origins and built upon in Odyssey but also bringing more of the original Assassin's Creed flavor to it. Although we of course have to wait and see how it all shakes out. The multiple editions for the game were also announced. I don't have any image at the time of this recording yet, so we'll likely look at them later and see if we got some new info from those. And they just confirmed while editing this video that next week on May 7th we will have the full gameplay reveal. You might have noticed the Xbox branding already, so it will be during an inside Xbox show that will showcase next-gen Xbox games. So yes, totally subscribe if you haven't already to be up to date on everything Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is really just the kickoff of my extensive coverage of this game till launch and beyond, of course. So like the video to support the channel. You can watch the trailer again on the channel by clicking on the screen, or I might put my latest Valhalla video there. Um, if you watch a little later. I will also be streaming live reactions and just a discussion on everything we learned today on my Twitch a little later after this video goes live. Just check the pinned comment for a link, follow on Twitch, and then you get a notification when I'm live. I hope to see you there. For now, I will speak to you next time, and goodbye.